no return of the renaissance man that's what we need mm, yeah you, you know? do stoicism. Look that up. Just stoicism you, you do, you do want to get into red pill <laughs> <laughs> but, but no it's true though just try to be the best at everything of everything yeah. Yeah. look at the men back in you know the day decades ago they're like freaking stylish they're yeah. skiing on the alps and stuff yeah you know everything they do is like they want the it's best proper, yeah get the best food best drinks best Everything. No, you know? I it's like, so funny. Uh, but like how they how they view that now, right? What what do they call it? Toxic masculinity. But you like know, that's sorry, it's it, 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 it depends. It depends. It depends. Yeah. Just, just don't say anything. Yeah. Just, just be dope at everything yeah. that you do. You don't have to like boast about boast it. about yeah. exactly. They, ab- they put so many names on it's like, oh toxic masculinity, <laughs> red pill. It's like yo, but that's that's, that's how, be a man, like dress properly. But you know, the environment is so sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. Like we ha- we c- we are so sensitive to every subject that we talk about. Oh, you can't be like this. You can't be like that because we're normalizing these things, and people are adapting to it. And more you adapt to it, that's what you create. So it's like we gotta unlearn these things slowly, and we gotta, you know, put our best foot forward in changing those small things. If we don't, then it's gonna carry on this rhetoric of, oh, be you are toxic, you're this, you're that. I think and it's changing now. You no, know, it is because like the even pendulum swinging. It is. It is. The other way. Because <laughs> we talk about it. we talk about it all the time, even with like Andrew T, right? Like he can be. A, his work, some of it's very questionable. Yeah. A lot of it's very questionable. But his premise of what he says, if someone who's in a place where they don't know what they're doing uh, as a man, you can take away a lot from it. Because uh, from a person who's looking in, it's easier to judge than understand. Because from a woman's perspective, you're like, no, what the, what the hell is he saying? But from <laughs> a man's perspective, you connect with him because, you know, he is saying some real shit. Go yes. work out. Go get your health up because that's where it starts from. Yeah. And then it just builds up from there because, one – you're in shape. Mentally, more you're, sh- you're more sharp. Your cognitive decisions sharpen up because until then, you're just sitting in your home. You're just eating chips, this, that. Yeah. Your, your stomach's yeah. hanging out. Yeah. And, and that's what it's becoming to because now we're babying that. Yeah. We're like, oh, no, it's okay. He's going through things. Fuck that. You're not going through <laughs> shit. Yeah. You're fucking sitting in your yeah. house. You got spending money on bullshit. You're going through shit. Hell no. Yeah. Like, that's the shit you got to deal with. It's life. Yeah. You think if life is just supposed to be just all picking cherries and picking apples out of the tree. Yeah. yeah. As a man, if you have time to dwell and think about things, that's a luxury. It you is. shouldn't it have is. time mm-hmm. to dwell. Yeah. You got to be on your grind. You got to hustle. You got to keep yourself busy. There's so many different things you can improve upon. Go learn to play the piano or something. Like, you have an outlet. Go, like, you know, work out, lift heavy, get sunshine, get nature, drink good water, Good food. Learn how to cook. Yeah. Like make good food. Like you know, there's, there's so many different things that you can do. You have so many. Make outlets. more money. Start a new business. Like there's. How could you even have time in a day to be able to do all? Just think about it and just be grateful for where you are. I mean, we're in Canada. You know, I know we Canada has this, this you know, cause, fair yeah. share of problems. Yeah. Right? Especially right now, but I mean, it's still better than like so 90% many other places of the world. Yeah. Right? So much yeah. better. I mean, and, and we have so much opportunity. So and you know, if if you're not down with Canada, the U.S. is right there. You know, <coughs> capital, make the change. capital of the world. Yeah, right? no, make <laughs> the change rather than complaining. That's yeah. what I tell people. I'm like, make the change in your life rather than complaining. Because yeah. the world has become so sensitive about it, right? Like, <coughs> nobody wants to put in work. Everybody yeah. just want to, like, look at social media. They're like, oh, shit, this is happening, this is happening and stuff, right? Social media is so bad. Like, Honestly, it's there, there's a good of mind. It. Yeah. Even, like, you have your kid yourself. Like, I tell them, I have a niece. She's four. I'm not even kidding, Manny. She does not do anything without it. Eat, put on Coco Melon. To do this, <laughs> put in Papa Patrol. She does not let go of that thing. And then I'm like, who's at fault for that? Like, I try not to judge my baby. I'm like, but yeah, I'm like, yeah. you guys can't allow this to happen. I'm like, this is your kid, right? Dude, that, that drives me nuts, honestly. <laughs> I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, there's this book called The Anxious Generation. Highly recommend any parents t- to read that book. But it talks about what we're doing to our, our kids right now and how effed up they're going to be in the future. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Um, mentally, and the attention spans and everything, like, like, oh my God, my, my wife and I, and, and, you know, we went to Hawaii, and we saw this kid in a stroller, <laughs> and this kid had this, like, thing attached to it, mm. with, like a phone, and yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like, you're in paradise, like, there's, it's beautiful here. You're in Hawaii. Yeah, and you're beautiful on your trees, line. Trees, nature, water, <coughs> yeah. beaches. Like, it's insane. And you got Crazy. this kid on a screen? Wild to me. Wild mm. to me. And, and they're allowing this behavior because they don't want to deal with it. 
And I know there's this, like, narrative, like, don't judge other parents, this and that. I'm not judging the parents, whatever. I just think it's wrong. No, it yeah. is. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, it it's is. It's messing no. up the kid. Yeah. It's messing up. So it, you're literally programming their minds. What are they going to look at the world as? Exactly. They're going to think the world sucks. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to think the screen has everything. Yeah. And, like, what it's doing to their brain chemistry and, you know, their dopamine rushes. The happiness comes and some of these things, like, cocoa melon is, is really bad for you, actually, for kids. From what I heard, a friend told me is that, the way that they've uh, generated that, you know, content is to really tap into, you know, a baby's mind, like a toddler's mind, uh, and stimulate. That's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. See, when you think about shit like that, when you, like, go in deep, in depth, <laughs> in understanding what these cartoons do to kids, yeah, it's a scary thought, because our kids are going to come into this environment. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, it's hard with the whole screen thing, and it's hard <coughs> as parents uh, as well for certain periods, but... I tell you, like, we've had you know, a few ups and downs with our toddler when it comes to screens, but now he doesn't even ask for it. Mm. Yeah. He never asked for it. He doesn't even like TV anymore. He'll, like, watch for, like, five, ten minutes and be like, eh, I'm going to go play. <laughs> like, that's how we've programmed him now. Dude, that's how it should yeah. be. Right? It's just there was a point, though. He was watching his <laughs> iPad one time, and, you know, I was giving his younger brother, you know, the baby uh, who's a few months old, a bath. And usually he helps me with the bath and, like, you know, I get him involved. And you got to get these kids involved. Exactly. In exactly. Yeah. Right? That's and and have starts. some sort of sense of responsibility, feel valued, uh, empowered and everything. So he usually helps me give the bath to the baby. And he wouldn't get up off this iPad, right? Damn. And <laughs> I'm like, listen, your brother needs you. And he doesn't get up. I grabbed that freaking iPad. <laughs> yeah. I went old school. I freaking, you know. <laughs> chucked it into a drawer. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Not across the room or anything like that. <laughs> and I'm like, get your, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. butt yeah, up. You have yeah. to. If family needs you, you better be there for yeah, them. Yeah. So two lessons there. One, you know, family is more important than the screen and especially when family needs you, you better get your ass up. You know? yeah. mm -hmm. And so then he never did that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, right? That's more kudos to you guys though. Yeah. And it, you, you got to have that tough love too. I think, you know, it's needed. Yeah, and a lot of parents might look at that situation and and probably do things differently and say things differently and and use different words and, and choice words or whatever. But <laughs> you know what? I think you should like. I, I think you know a lot of kids love to also blame their parents for whatever their upbringing in childhood. Yeah, I don't think you can really blame your parents as long as you know they worked hard because exactly they did the best that they could with the data and the information and, and that they had at the time. Yeah. Mm. They worked super hard maybe and they weren't around as much because they're trying to build a better life for you. You chose to go into drugs. <laughs> no, it's true though. You're a dumbass for doing no, that. No, it's true yeah. though. And that's right? one of the topics. And you can't blame your parents because their intentions were good. Good, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They come from a place of struggle. You can't, you can't yeah. look at them and be like, no, my parents weren't here for this, pay for what. But what are you doing right now that's any different? Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. say you even do blame them. How are you any better? They actually face racism. <laughs> exactly. They <Yeah>. actually face <laughs> yeah, no, stuff that you won't, wouldn't even think of that's existing. They may have gone to physical fights. 100%. Right? Yeah. To they defend got themselves. spat at. They got things thrown at them. They got their bugs thrown off and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. What are you complaining about? guys welcome back to another episode of modern brown men uh we got a special guest for y'all today um we've been touring the city of toronto <laughs> we've been trying to get the guest out there to give you guys the most informative you know information that you can get and uh we're trying to get some of the savants in their field where you know they have strived and you know taking big leaps when it comes to our community so you know yeah. we wanted to uh get in touch with manny um He's someone that I I wasn't I didn't know who he was until I saw his um, his profile when he reached out to us as well, and um, someone actually told me that you know you're you're an investor in a certain company and I'm like, who is this person? Yeah. I'm like, Let me, I want to know more about him. And then later I found out you're one of the co-founders of Daily Hive, and you know an advisor. Um, take me through that journey, man. Like tell us our audience who you are. What's your background? And just give us, like, a gist of who you are as a person, man. Because I think your story is intriguing. I don't think a lot of people know about you, man. And I mean this because I think a lot of people need to know about your story and how you came about because I think it can help a lot of individuals that are coming up in the entrepreneur um, uh, field. And it will give them a lot of insight in what to do and what not to do. So 
give us the audience a quick little <laughs> recap about you, Manny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Th- thanks for the intro- introduction. Um, good to be here. And uh, yeah, I mean, um, you know, growing up, I was uh, always interested in the news. Yeah. So I would read the newspaper even when I was in elementary school. Usually just flipping over to like the sports page, look at the standings, see how Canucks are doing. Are they beating the Oilers? <laughs> oh. All that, right? yeah. uh, <laughs> that was a tough series. That was a tough series. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That was, that was the 90s. We weren't so good in the uh, late 90s anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then um, 94, though, almost won the oh, Almost. Oh, <laughs> almost. that was close. Almost. Um, and in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just growing up, I started noticing that like <clears throat> on the front page of the newspapers, it, w- it was a lot of ch- chatter and talk about you know, Indo-Canadian gangsters. Mm. Um, and after a while, it started bothering me. Uh, because there was one week where for five days straight, Monday to Friday, it was like, you know, gangster this, you know, gangster that, this new gang mm-hmm. guy that. I'm just like, it can't just be brown people committing all the crimes and doing all the gang stuff. Yeah. I mean, Cody have been here for so long. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so true, though. It's true. And they're more organized, I guess, but. Yeah. No, it's like minorities do get tainted, that picture of like, oh, they're the one who are leading this negative impact on our society, and they highlight it and they run with it, you know? And I think is, as you said, it's kind of it's unfair yeah. to kind of paint this narrative about a community and culture that's so profound that has so much respect for people and the way that we carry ourselves and so much more to it. There's yeah. so much more you know, to it. What about you know giving back and seva and all that? Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. never he's, yeah. you'll never see be like oh like now you might see it, but you never see people covering back in the day. Be like oh god, do I say what that they do for whether it's homeless people, people how they invite them in, you know if. If, they, if they're in need, you won't see that at the front page because they don't care for you. They care for, oh, what's the drama? Yeah. Well, How can we entice more, you know, divide in between people? If it bleeds, it reads, right? Exactly. That's that's a term uh, when it comes to media. And, yeah, I mean, in terms of giving backside things, I think there's a stat in the UK where um, Punjabis and Sikhs, uh, on average, give back more per year yeah. to charity uh, than any other uh, group. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... Seeing that in media bothered me, uh, planted a seed in me. I don't know what it would do for me, uh, having that seed <coughs> planted. I started, like, coding as well, when, like, learning on my own when I was in elementary school, learning HTML, Java, you know, different coding languages. Yeah. Yeah. So very new. So I was interested in technology as well. Mm. And then, you know, fast forward to university, uh, and, you know, close to my last year, uh, one of my childhood friends, Karm, uh, we were playing video games. And I was like, hey, Karm, you want to start a blog? He goes, yeah, what do you want to write about? I'm like, I don't know. He goes, let's write about <laughs> Vancouver. I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it. <laughs> uh, we were very passionate about our city. Yeah. What really bothered us then as well about, you know, what was happening in Vancouver was this is back in 08. Olympics were coming in in 2010. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a lot of negativity around it. Yeah. And it was like the own Vancouver media just bashing Vancouver. Um, and Really? Yeah. I didn't, it, I, I didn't, say. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Simple. The media was very different back then. Yeah. Um, and there was no community kind of, you know, being grown, and it was just small cities type of mindset. So we, you know, ventured into the blogosphere and started just writing articles, more opinion-based, and just whatever was on our mind. Um, Slowly but surely, you know, organically, we grew our following on Twitter, um, and then the mainstream started jumping on Facebook in in 2011. Um, And so then we started gaining a following there. Uh, IG wasn't even around. It wasn't. I mean, which yeah, is crazy. During that time, no. Pretty man. new IG. Yeah. Um, and the 2010 Olympics obviously was huge for us as well. We covered a lot of that. So we saw a spike in traffic. And, you know, we had a judgment call then. Of like, do we continue? Or is, was this just a fun hobby for a bit? Yeah. We're like, all right, let's continue. Let's keep it going. Um, then, you know, w- the content that we were, we were covering at the time was more about discovery. Where to go, what to do. You know, new restaurant openings. Yeah, yeah sports. Yep. Uh, business, startup you know, scene, um, events, festivals, things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So things that resonated with the millennial population, you know. Mm. Um, and there was nothing out there in media for the millennial population. You go to the arts section in the newspaper, and it was just a bunch of, like, symphonies and stuff, right? Yeah, no yeah. Jibber, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, you know, which is great. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Now, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so then, yeah, so then, it, then we started covering more news. Uh, and we don't have any journalistic backgrounds. Uh, you know, I was a business student, mm-hmm. uh, and Karm was an accountant, yeah. um, and we d- were w- in over our heads. Uh, so Legacy Media just, like, hated us. They had a Facebook group. 
a private one where they would really? bash us. Oh yeah, it was crazy. What? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would we would go into events uh, where we were media sponsors, mm -hmm. and the people checking us in would look at us like, "Whoa, brown guys." Yeah, because <laughs> you think about it, like, um, I think brown people have always pigeonholed themselves into their own community. Community, yep, oh, exactly. Right, and not really thought of it like you know mainstream. So even then, you know, back then, a lot of the uh, the brown people that were in media were just covering South Asian content, mm -hmm. news, and all that. Our thinking was just like, okay, this whole Indo-Canadian thing, I don't get it. I'm born here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Canadian. Yeah. Right? I'm a multicultural or what? Yeah, no, that's <laughs> yeah. true, though. Why I got to be labeled Indo-Canadian? Exactly. Yeah. Why do I have to be labeled? Yep. It doesn't make any sense. Yep. So early on, I was, you know, that was always my thinking as well. You know, the whole racism thing, like, I don't know. I, I'm sure I always faced it, but... I didn't really think about it ever. Exactly. I just yeah, like yeah. kind of carried on. I was like ignorant towards it. Mm -hmm. I think ignorance is bliss. It is. Yeah. And I think the more that you think about it, dwell on it, especially today's day and age, there's so much talk about it. So much. Even though there's so little racism compared to what it was decades ago. So little. It, it is a problem because it's actually dividing more now. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other topic. No, it is. <laughs> no, well, 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 we can touch on that too yeah, later yeah. on. But <laughs> I know, I know, I know what you exactly what you're getting at when it comes to the whole dividing people. So. But yeah. we'll dive into it later. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we, 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 could, we could dive into that. Um, so we just carried forward. We're like, okay, let's build our social media following. We saw that, you know, Instagram, after a while, with their 100 million followers, yeah. zero dollars of revenue, whatever it was, sold for over a billion dollars. Wow. So we were entering an attention economy where if you could capture an audience and their attention, their engagement, you were worth something. Hmm. Because once you have that, you can just slap on ads everywhere, or whatever, right? Yeah. You can monetize it after. Yep. So we kept growing. Fast forward, um, long story short, um, I moved to Toronto back in January 2000, mm -hmm. right before the world shut down. Uh, <laughs> I had met my wife now it, in Vancouver, like late 2018. We chatted, 2019, traveling back and forth. Yeah. Like, oh, let's grow the business in Toronto. January 20, uh, uh, 2020, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the world shuts down. Um, crazy crazy <laughs> you know adversity mm -hmm. you know for media our revenues were like red hot beginning of march yeah. like the, the hottest like you know revenue numbers that we had ever seen the first like half of the month and then second it's half like drop. and drop it's drop yeah. <laughs> it's crazy so that's scary it's such a scary thought yeah. yeah yeah it was insane so then we're thinking about you know payroll and uh how we pay our bills and yeah. advertisers are not advertising no one wants to advertise in a climate or even play with the whole pandemic and, and COVID side of things yeah. and try to find a positive out of it because it's very risky and people are very sensitive at the time. Nobody wanted to talk about it either. Yeah. So <coughs> it was, uh, you know, luckily, you know, we battled through. We decreased our salaries personally. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of employees voluntarily did as well. Uh, we re-upped them after things stabilized. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so we got through that period. Um and then, you know, met, uh, met a company uh, called Zoomer Media um, back in 2022, mm. uh, just, just around summertime. Yeah. And uh, they approached us and were like, hey, um, we're interested in your entity. Mm. And, you know, I was always, always thinking about it as well. I'm like, you know what? Like 14 years, mm. we bootstrapped this company. Um, we had no investors. Yeah. We paid ourselves below market salary, salary yeah. Yeah. and blood, sweat, and tears into this company, ups and downs, uh, moments like the pandemic mm. where almost lost everything. everything yeah. And it was like, you know what? Now's the time to kind of take the chips off the table and take care of ourselves a bit yeah. and then maybe continue growing this. Let's see. So um, I led the charge in terms of the exit. Um, handling everything on our side, uh, all the numbers, all the due diligence, all that. Um, we sold in September 2022. Yep. And uh, you know, a few months later, I found the corporate world just wasn't for me. <laughs> that left. <laughs> then there's a whole other chapter after that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah. a beautiful story. And this is for, like you said, it's daily hives. Like, how, do, how did that name even come about? Is this something that you guys just came up with it randomly? Or how did it even come about, like daily hives? Yeah. It, it is a catchy name. So... You know, names can come up randomly. So I, I was looking at the CEO. Uh, I was listening to him talk um, of, of Coho. I don't know if you heard of that company. Coho, like yeah. K-O-H-O. Yeah. He said he saw it on a hockey stick. 
Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, that's how he came up with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, though. There's a, <laughs> a company that creates hockey sticks, Coho. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Interesting. So, oh. how we thought of the name was, you know, originally we started as Van City Buzz. And I had come up with a list of, like, 200-plus names. Jeez. Narrowed it down, Van City yeah. Buzz. We had to rebrand to Daily Hive when we started expanding across Canada to Calgary, Edmonton, Toronto, mm. Montreal. And so, we were like, okay, the bees buzzing, going into, flying into his hive, daily news, daily hive. Yeah. Mm. That's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a creative mind to think of that, you know? Yeah. Because, like, but there's layers to it, too. Exactly. Because, yeah. like, you know, bees are buzzing, they're working hard. <coughs> there's a company culture around it, too, that you can create. There's a lot of layers to it. There yeah. is. And I think that defines it perfectly, as you said. And it's like, what is that? Oh, it's a hive. It takes a whole, as you said, a team to build a proper hive. It didn't just get built overnight. So, I mean, more power to you guys even sticking it through. Because, as you said, back in like 2010, 11, 12, Stuff like this is not prevalent, and it's not guaranteed that you're going to get some sort of return. Yeah. Especially back then. And you said IG wasn't even around. Instagram wasn't around. And so you're like, okay, do we really go in this full time and put all the effort into it? And we might not even, you know, get to the level that we think we can because you don't know where it's going to go. And on top of that, you wear a plug and everything, too. Yeah. You have to find some sort of systemic I, w- I wouldn't say racism at that point, but you, you people do look at you oddly. The investors are more hesitant, look towards the content given who's behind it, right? So, man, more power to you guys for even just sticking it out for 14 years, man. Nowadays, yeah. people don't even stick around for 14 days, let alone 14, <laughs> 14 <years>. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> On a date? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. People can't hold a conversation, let alone <laughs> doing it that uh, year and a year. 14 seconds, got to check a phone. <laughs> yeah. It's so true, though. <laughs> yeah. We have a, such a short attention span these days with people. Yeah. Don't have that ability. So yeah, you know. and, and we didn't, uh, I- you know, go full time until another 14, 2014. Is what I full yeah. time. Yeah. Um, because it was, it was scary, man. You know, but I, you know, I highly encourage going full time because once you, the founders are on board full time, and we had other employees at the time. Once the founders are on full time, it's just rocket ships. <laughs> then you're on it. This is your only focus. You find a way to work. I think really you look at it. You know, if you're ever starting anything, whether it's a business or you know a relationship or, you know, your family or whatever, you look at where you want to be, you know, five years from now. Yeah. And, you know, figure all that out and you reverse engineer it. Mm. And so if you have a certain number in mind in terms of business or your personal net worth or, you know, income or what have you, yeah, you set that goal. That that's what you want, you know, yeah. three years from now, five years from now, whatever. And then you'll figure out a way. You'll get creative. You'll be like, how do I get there? What do I do? Okay, yeah, maybe I need to, like, start, like, a consulting business, have some retainers, maybe have that as a recurring revenue stream. Maybe then I invest in some, like, you know, dividend stocks or, yeah. you know, something, things yeah. like that, you know, whatever it is. You'll figure out a way um, to, you know, create those revenue streams and, and what have you. Or for your family, you have a certain lifestyle that you want to live. You know, there's this mansion or this, this house that's, you know, in this neighborhood that you really love. Right, yeah. And it's like, you know what? I want to live like that one day, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And you just set your mind to it. Yeah. And then it's just, you know, you just execute. Yeah. Make it happen. You'll find a way. Like manifest it, it in a sense. Manifest it, yeah. <coughs> but with cause a lot of, I mean, manifesting has been has been overused so much nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> but to the point, like, people say, like, oh, you know, it'll happen eventually. No, it won't happen without an action plan, right? Yeah. And, like, going to your point, like, you know, making sure that you have some steps lined. You know, to get to the point, whether it be whatever lifestyle, mansion, whatever it is, but I think the above everything else is like you have the patience for it because you're gonna be put through a lot of barriers and question whether or not you'll be able to overcome those barriers, right? Because nowadays, you people <coughs> see social media, they're like got the Lamborghinis and all that <laughs> sort, and they just they just jump to it and they're like, oh, you want to have this lavish life, but it's like all temporary. Right, so half of the stuff is rented out. Yeah, <laughs> it, is. it is absolutely. It a lot of these, uh, you know, folks that are that are you know selling their educational seminars or yeah. oh man, uh, don't even get me started on and all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Are renting out these cars and yeah, um, they're making their money though. Uh, yeah. through that, but it's so overdone now. Private jet thing to all that. <coughs> yeah, um, and it's just like temporary kind of bliss and all it that is. too, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, and you also got to create your own luck too, like. Um, you know, luck is, it's easy to say like, oh, you got you know lucky. oh I had that idea. Mm-hmm. That person's so lucky that like, you know, they yeah, did it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But there's so much that goes behind the execution. You yeah. put yourself it's in a safe. position to yeah. be lucky. Uh, like luck's part of the game. Yeah. That's how it works. But guess what? If you don't work at your craft or whatever you do, you don't even put yourself to be lucky. Yeah. Because yeah. lucky, you can put yourself in a position. 
yeah, sometimes they are these random <coughs> things that do happen in life that are, you know, just, I guess you can say a blessing, but to get lucky, you got to put yourself in those positions. Yeah. It doesn't just come to you. And everything compounds and adds up. Like, for example, me moving to Toronto, mm. um, that was moving away from my siblings, everything, my family, yeah. my yeah. cousins, my community, everything that I had built. Like, you know, I know everyone in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. And so moving away from all that, which is very safe um, and secure for me there. And then moving to a different, well, moving to a different city. city. Why did you do that, though? So yeah, Vancouver, I would say, like, is it was it based off where you were headed in your career or was it just... Family wise, wh- why why did you make that decision? Because it's Vancouver to Toronto, it's a it's a big shift too. Three hours Three behind, west to east. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? The more I visited Toronto, and I had already been thinking, and like before I had met uh, my wife right, yeah. in 2018, like end of summer, <coughs> I told my sister, I'm like, you know what? I'm getting bored of Vancouver. Yeah. I know everyone. And there's nothing more for me to do. I kind of like yeah. have have done everything and met everyone that I wanted to meet. Um, just getting bored, and so. Um, I was just excited for a new challenge. Mm. I'm excited for, um, you know, meeting new people and um, just, just a different environment. Yeah. I think that it's it's important, you know, not for everybody, but for some entrepreneurs to move out of their hometown. Mm. Your hometown presents you with so many distractions. It's so um, true. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many events you got to attend. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many, you know, friends from high school mm-hmm. hitting you up or, you know, from... It's always something. Yeah. It's always something going on. Yeah. And... It's hard to focus on what you need to do. Yeah. And that's where I've seen some Edmonton entrepreneurs, and even Vancouver ones, <laughs> that have moved out here to Toronto. Yeah. And so what I really liked about Toronto moving here was that I was meeting this different type of you know, work culture and mindset where it was just like you know, more go, go, go. Um, I love the West Coast. I love Vancouver. I'm born and raised in Vancouver. Yeah. It's more uh, you know, slow-paced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? No, it is. It's yeah. more slow-paced. Yeah. I mean, you... Th- a lot of ideas come out of the West Coast, you know, that being from Vancouver to, like, California or whatever, yep. L.A. And because um, you have more time, you know, you're going hiking, you're doing yoga, more yeah. mindfulness. The atmosphere know. is way different compared to here. It's oh, chill, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think you need that, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then here's, like, more process and task-driven. Yeah. It's just like, all right, I got to do this, got to do this. And then you work till, like, 6, 7 mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Whereas in Vancouver, not everyone works till late there. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so I was just fascinated by, like, the culture, how, how quickly things move here. Um, you know, people pay on time here. Yeah. <laughs> and they pay you for your services <laughs> yeah. and what you do. Um, and it was just, I don't know, it was exciting. It was a bigger city. So many different people. Just loved it. And so <laughs> the energy, it just gets you up. Like, yeah. I don't know if you ever visited, like, New York before as well or, like, been in downtown Toronto or, like, stayed. You feel like they never you sleep. Know, yeah. sleep. You just, <laughs> you just get out of bed and you just want to go. Go, yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> and then you, you kind of touched upon it as well because me and uh, Mook talks about it all the time. Like, I was initially in uh, accounting. I was doing my CPA, mm-hmm. going into that corporate world. And you said, like, corporate world wasn't for me. Yeah. And I was heading down there. And I, I tell this story all the time. I'm, I'm just like, I'm, I'm in my class on my CPA. I'm doing it. I'm looking out the window. I'm like, how the hell am I here? I don't see myself in a corporate, you know, place because I know myself. And then I ended up just drop, dropping out my CPA. I'm like, nah, I told dad, I'm like, I can't do this. I'm like, I know what I, I know what I can be successful at. This is not it. Mm. It doesn't speak to me. It doesn't resonate to me. I'm only doing it just to do something. I'm like, what's the purpose of that? Just a lot to of do, CPAs do that. Yeah, <laughs> like just to do it just for the hell of it. Like, cause yeah. I, I'm a CPA. Yeah, it's cool, but I just had to get out of that comfort zone. And then for you, you spoke. You're like, you tried corporate world, but it just wasn't yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I, I meet so many, you know, accountants, CPAs, <laughs> that like hate what they do <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, just, and they always have like another outlet or like a side hustle <coughs> or like a creative uh expression uh that that they have in terms of like an outlet or something um and then that kind of becomes their main thing and they mm-hmm. become like entrepreneurs or something else exactly it's funny um <laughs> uh, I- how different it is yeah. uh that's how much they hate like <laughs> yeah, debit and credit and numbers and stuff yeah. Tired <laughs> of them. Yeah. i was tired of seeing them in schools <laughs> yeah. yeah but you know if i hadn't moved to toronto wouldn't have been able to sell the company. Mm, yeah, I wouldn't have met Zoomer Media. Wouldn't nope. have been able to take those meetings. Would I have traveled from Vancouver to Toronto to meet them, to get to know them, to build that rapport and mm. all that? Yeah. But to have that FaceTime? Yeah. Maybe not. You never know. Yeah. Right? Most so true. you got to put yourself in the right positions where it creates the most probability of success. Yeah. Mm. Something to really think about. Being, you know, for me, really important being close to downtown, right, of, of Toronto. So less travel then. So... You know, my commute is, is very short. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't have to think about like, oh, you know what? On this day, I gotta go downtown. <coughs> I could just pick up from my home office and go downtown anytime. Yeah, right. I live pretty close. Um, that saves a lot of time in terms of um, not only on the work side of things, but more time so I can spend time with my family. Yeah. yeah, right. So that's one thing that compounds as well. Yeah, very important. How do you balance that though? Because like yeah. you see a lot of people like struggling with that, like family. Because like, especially when you have kids. Yeah. And balancing with your work life because when you are so busy, when you have so many people you know that rely on you to do this, do that, how do you even juggle all that? <laughs> the modern brown man. <laughs> <laughs> can I swear on you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can swear. You Anything, whatever, man. man. It's fucked. <laughs> Uncensored. <laughs> Uncensored, yeah. <laughs> We're going to use that clip. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I swear on you? It's fucked. <laughs> yeah. Holy moly. Yeah, I know. Juggling kids and everything. Um, no, for sure. Like, you know, my, one of my Israeli friends said, though, that when you have a new child, I don't know if he said a new son or a new child, whatever mm-hmm. it is, yeah. it brings upon more good luck. It's called burkit or something. Someone check on this. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. That's what he told me. <laughs> and, you know, there's never a great time or a bad time to have a kid. Yeah. You're never fully prepared. You never are, yeah. Um, you do the best that you can. But you will figure it out. Yeah. You have this, like, little baby that's depending <laughs> upon you for everything yeah. to eat sleep you know be held all that stuff and you just got to make it happen right and you got to provide you, you got to hunt your man yeah. right you got yeah you got to find a way and it actually m- makes you more productive and more efficient because mm. your time gets limited and you learn how to do more with your time mm. and so perhaps you're not scrolling as much on <laughs> IG yeah, or TikTok, TikTok or whatever. Yeah. Um, and you find ways to, you know... Delegate your... Delegate, your be more duties, efficient. Yep. Cut things out of your life. Um, and it you try to find that balance. Yeah. Right? Um, but, yeah, I mean, having kids is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Like do, you, do you find that <coughs> when having, you know, before just being just you and your wife compared to now having a family a family do you find that you're hustling a lot more because you have that responsibility of another life of another child right so yeah. do, do you find like before and the after of it yeah. and knowing that man, i have a, I have a family to take care of at home like i need to work twice as much harder now <laughs> right so yeah it's like more mouths to more. feed yeah. absolutely yeah. You're, you're working way harder because um you don't have a choice you have a choice yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do my yeah. kid's not gonna eat today yeah yeah because <laughs> yeah. the reason why i say that is because like, nowadays, we were talking about this before, like, in our previous <coughs> episodes, like, back home. Now you see these kids going into crimes and they're getting into these type of avenues that, <coughs> you know, where they shouldn't be in the first place. And it's just like, okay, where does it start from, right? We get to backtrack and it's just, the way I see it is just like, okay, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a child and starting a family, but it's just, in what <coughs> position are you in, right? And you should be actually looking at your own position before start bringing someone else into your life, right? Because a lot of what's happening is now is unfortunately it's just these kids don't really have the type of avenue. They don't have the mentorship to really, really be led into the proper avenues of, you know, where they should be, right? And the way I find it is just that because it, you just don't have the financials, you don't have anything planned out, it becomes a little bit more difficult because everything else slows down because you have another child, like another life to take care of, right? Yeah. And the reason why I say it is just because, you know, it's kind of interesting just to see the before and after of it. Like, yeah. before it was just you and your wife, and now you have a child. Yeah. Now it's just pushing you even further now. Yeah. But you had something going on first, right? Yeah. And then you're like, okay, you start a family and stuff. Are like you guys married? No. No, none of us are married. <laughs> so friends or what? Fiancés? Yeah. He's, he's single. <laughs> I'm single. Yeah. He's single. I gotta go. It's a dangerous question, though. I don't it is. It is. <laughs> the thing is, like, this is what I tell people. I'm like, a lot of people are like, oh, um, I used to be that person that used to blame the environment yeah. rather than understanding what the flaws that I have. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the people that are sitting across to you or whoever you're going to meet, they all come with flaws just like yourself. Yeah. The more we think from a process, we're like, oh, what's wrong with you? Why are you like this? Rather than coming from an understanding perspective, I'm telling you, you'll find that person mm-hmm. as soon as you change that mindset. It's yeah. all about the mindset where you perceive things because – the more you perceive in a negative light, the more negativity you will sure. attract, right? Yeah, yeah, if you're, like, always complaining about girls mm-hmm. being like this or that, blah, 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 blah. That's how I used to be. I'm not going to lie. I used yeah. to be like that. A yeah. lot of guys are like that. You know, I can name some guys that are <laughs> still single and stuff as well. <laughs> that are like that. But, 
yeah, I mean, you gotta become a, you know, a high value man, you know? <laughs> you do. Yeah. Oh, it. we're gonna get, you you get into that. No, topic? you do. Yeah. You do have to, though. You do. You just gotta, you know, just everything, just, you know, return of the Renaissance, man. That's what we need. Mm, yeah, you, you do. Know? Look that up. Just Stoicism. You, you do you wanna get into red pill? <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, it's true, though. Just try to be the best at everything. At everything. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the men back in, you know, the day decades ago. They're like freaking stylish. They're yeah. skiing on the Alps and stuff. Yeah. You know, everything they do is like, they want the it's best. Proper, yeah. They get the best food, best drinks, best everything. No, I, it's but so like, funny. But like how they, how they view that now, right? What, what do they call it? Toxic masculinity. But you like, know, that's sorry, it's it, 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 it depends. It depends. It depends. Yeah. Just, just don't say anything. Yeah. Just, just be dope and everything yeah. that you do. You don't have to like, Boast about Boast it. About yeah. Exactly. They, a, they put so many names on it. It's like, oh, toxic masculinity, <laughs> red pill. It's like, yo, but that's 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 be a man. Like, dress properly. But the environment is so sensitive. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, ha- we, we are so sensitive to every subject that we talk about. Oh, you can't be like this. You can't be like that. Because we're normalizing these things. And people are adapting to it. And more you adapt to it, that's what you create. So it's like, we got to unlearn these things slowly. And we got to, you know, put our best foot forward in changing those small things. If we don't, then it's going to carry on this rhetoric of, oh, you are toxic, you're this, you're that. I think and it's changing now. You no, know, it changing. is. Cause like the even pendulum is swinging. It is, it is. The other <laughs> way. Because we, <laughs> we talk about it all the time, even with, like, Andrew T, right? Like, he can be, uh, his work, some of it's very questionable. Yeah. A lot of it's very questionable. But his premise of what he says, if someone who's in a place where they don't know what they're doing as a man, you can take away a lot from it. Because if I'm a person who's looking in, it's easier to judge than understand. Because from a woman's perspective, you're like, no, what the, what the hell is he saying? <laughs> but from a man's perspective, you connect with him because, you know, he is saying some real shit. Go yes. work out. Go get your health up because that's where it starts from. Yeah. And then it just builds up from there. Because, one, you're in shape. Mentally, you're more, you're sh- you're more yeah. sharp. Your cognitive decisions sharpen up. Because until then, you're just sitting in your home. You're just eating chips, this, that. Yeah. You're... you're Stomachs yeah. hanging out, yeah. and, and that's what it's becoming too. Because now we're babying that. Yeah, we're like, oh no, it's okay. He's going through thing. Fuck that. You're not going through <laughs> shit. Yeah. You're fucking sitting in your yeah. house. You got spending money on bullshit. You're going through shit. Hell yeah. no. Yeah. Like that's the shit you got to deal with. It's life. Yeah. You think if life is just supposed to be just all picking cherries and picking apples out of the tree? Yeah. yeah. As a man, if you have time to dwell and think about things, that's a luxury. It you is. shouldn't it have is. time mm-hmm. to dwell. Percent. You got to be on your grind. You got to hustle. You got to keep yourself busy. There's so many different things you can improve upon. Go learn to play the piano or something. Like, you have an outlet. Go, like, you know, work out. Lift heavy. Get sunshine. Get nature. Drink good water. Good food. Learn how to cook. Yeah. Like, make good food. Like, Yo. there's, there's so many different things that you can do. You have so many Make more money. Start a new business. Like, there's, how could you even have time in a day to be able to dwell, just think about it, yeah. and just be grateful for where you are. I mean, we're in Canada, you know. I know we Canada has this, this you know, fair yeah. share of problems, yeah. but especially right now. But I mean, it's still better than like so 90 many other places of the yeah. world, right? So yeah. much better, I mean, and and we have so much opportunity. So and you know, if if you're not down with Canada, the U.S. is right there. there too. You know, <coughs> capitalism, the capital of the world. Yeah, right? no, make the change <laughs> rather than complaining. That's yeah. what I tell people. I'm like, make the change in your life rather than complaining. Because yeah. the world has become so sensitive about it, right? Like, <coughs> nobody wants to put in work. Everybody yeah. just want to, like, look at social media. They're like, oh, shit, this is happening. This is happening and stuff, right? Social media is so bad. Like, Honestly, it's there, there's a the good your mind. It. Yeah. Even, like, you have your kid yourself. Like, I tell them, I have a niece. She's four. I'm not even kidding, Manny. She does not do anything without it. Eat, put on Coco Melon. To do this, <laughs> put in Papa Patrol. She does not let go of that thing. And then I'm like... Who's at fault for that? Like, I try not to judge my puppy. I'm like, but yeah, man, I'm like, yeah. you guys can't allow this to happen. I'm like, this is your kid, right? Dude, that, that drives me nuts, honestly. <laughs> I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah. Have, like, there's this book called The Anxious Generation. Highly recommend any parents t- to read that book. But it talks about what we're doing to our, our kids right now and how effed up they're going to be in the future. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Um, mentally and the attention spans and everything. Like, like oh, my God. My... My wife and I, and, and, you know, we went to Hawaii, and we saw this kid in a stroller, <coughs> and this kid had this, like, thing attached to it, mm. with, like a phone, and yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like, you're in paradise, like, there's, it's beautiful here, you're in Hawaii, yeah, and you're on your trees, line. nature, water, <coughs> yeah. beaches, like, it's insane, 
And you got this kid on a screen? Wild to me. Wild to me. And, and they're allowing this behavior because they don't want to deal with it. And I know there's this, like, narrative, like, don't judge other parents, this and that. I'm not judging the parents, whatever. I just think it's wrong. No, it yeah. is wrong. <laughs> You know? Yeah, no, it it's is It's messing wrong. up the kid. Yeah. It's messing up. So it's, you're literally programming their minds. What are they going to look at the world as? Exactly. They're going to think the world sucks. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to think the screen has everything. Yeah. And, like, what it's doing to their brain chemistry and, you know, their dopamine rushes. The happiness comes and some of these things, like, cocoa melon is, is really bad for you, actually, for kids. From what I heard, a friend told me is that the way that they've uh, generated that, you know, content is to really tap into, you know, a baby's mind, like a toddler's mind, uh, and stimulate. That's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. See, when you think about shit like that, when you, like, go in deep, in depth, <laughs> in understanding what these cartoons do to kids, yeah, it's a scary thought, because our kids are going to come into this environment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's hard with the whole screen thing, and it's hard <coughs> as parents uh, as well for certain periods, but... I tell you, like, we've had, you know, a few ups and downs with our toddler when it comes to screens, but now he doesn't even ask for it. Mm. Yeah. He never asked for it. He doesn't even like TV anymore. He'll, like, watch for, like, five, ten minutes and be like, eh, I'm going to go play. <laughs> like, that's how we've programmed him now. Dude, how it should yeah. be, right? It's just... There was a point, though. He was watching his <laughs> iPad one time, and, you know, I was giving his younger brother, the, you know, the baby, uh, who's a few months old, a bath. And usually he helps me with the bath <coughs> and like you know I get him involved and everything. You got to get these kids involved, in exactly, yeah. right? That's and and have some sort of sense of responsibility, feel valued, uh, empowered, and everything. So he usually helps me give the bath to the baby, and he wouldn't get up off this iPad, right? Yeah. And <laughs> I'm like, listen, your brother needs you, and he's gonna get up. I grabbed that freaking iPad. <laughs> yeah. I went old school. I freaking you know. <laughs> chucked it into a drawer. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Not across the room or anything like that. <laughs> and I'm like, get your, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. butt up. You have yeah. to. If family needs you, you better be there for yeah, them. So yeah. two lessons there. One, you know, family is more important than the screen and especially when family needs you, you better get your ass up. You know? yeah. mm -hmm. And so then he never did that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, right? That's more kudos to you guys though. Yeah. And it, you, you got to have that tough love too. I think, you know, it's needed. Yeah, and a lot of parents might look at that situation and and probably do things differently and say things differently and and use different words and, and choice words or whatever. But <coughs> you know what? I think you should like. I, I think you know a lot of kids love to also blame their parents for whatever their upbringing in childhood. Yeah, I don't think you can really blame your parents as long as you know they worked hard because exactly they did the best that they could with the data and the information and, and that they had at the time. Yeah. Mm. They worked super hard maybe and they weren't around as much because they're trying to build a better life for you. You chose to go into drugs. <laughs> no, it's true though. You're a dumbass for doing no, that. No, it's true yeah. though. And that's right? one of the and topics. And you can't blame your parents because their intentions were good. Good, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They come from a place of struggle. You can't, you can't yeah. look at them and be like, no, my parents weren't here for this, pay for what. But what are you doing right now that's any different? Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. say you even do blame them. How are you any better? They actually face racism. <laughs> exactly. They yeah. actually face yeah, yeah, no, stuff that you won't, wouldn't even think of that's existing. They may have gone to physical fights. 100%. Right? Yeah. To defend they got themselves. spat at. They got things thrown at them. They got their bugs thrown off and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. What are you complaining about? <laughs> it's so true, though. And, I, like, you grew up in BC, obviously. Yeah. Like, because we always, we haven't really never gotten into, like, the segment of our kids are getting into a lot more drug violence and stuff like that. It's BC always been, but now yeah. it's like, it seems m way more, even Edmonton, man, like every other day there's some up and our kid get getting in some shooting, stabbing. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's an it's interesting topic because when it first started in BC in the 80s, you know, Bindi Joe Hall, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Still around. Still, I'm <laughs> still around. <laughs> <laughs> Famous line. <laughs> so at the time, there was a lot of racism <coughs> towards uh, Apane. Apane, yeah. And they kind of, you know, banded together started working out, and they fought back against the racism. Racism, yeah. And then, for whatever reason, whether it was culture, whether it was rap music, whether it was just like, hey, let's make some money, let's show them who we, who are, we are, let's show off, or whatever, that we could be more successful, uh, they got into the drug business. Mm. And they got enticed by it. Mm. And slowly they pulled their friends in too. And then, you know, that's kind of how it all started. But originally, it was more to fight back against the oppression Systemic and racism, racism and autumn, that yes. there was. Yeah. Uh, because the numbers were against mm -hmm. uh, South Asians at the time. And it, they shouldn't have gone into drugs. 
obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not hundred percent. Kids today shouldn't get into drugs. Um, it's so sad to see, man. Sad, yeah, sad. Really a lot was. of wasted potential. So yeah. much wasted. Now I grew up in South Van, right? Yeah. So I, s- I saw it like kind of the mm-hmm. the last of it. I, I wasn't in the midst of it. I wasn't during the Bindi Joha years. Yeah. But I but I saw like you know the last little bit of it. You know them graduating. I had some friends that has so much potential to become like doctors and dentists and then they you know go out and start dealing drugs and this and that yeah. I, i've it's crazy seen man. numbers drop of those that were alive uh in grades you know my grade younger grades older grades as well uh, and it's unfortunate a lot of wasted potential yeah. what's the solution i don't know yeah. <laughs> you know it's easy to yeah it's it, it's probably multi-pronged you know, community is really important. I think a lot of kids get into <coughs> it because they feel more community. They get uh, attracted to the lifestyle, yeah. which appears, you know, pretty fun. Yeah, it seems like, the outside. like money, this, yeah. that. Nice yeah. cars, yeah. lavish lifestyle, yeah. travel, all that. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want that? Yeah. But, and they think there's a shortcut towards getting there. Mm. Because yeah. when you're, you know, a teenager and you're early 20s, you're pretty impatient. And you just want things now. now yeah. and especially nowadays. Yeah, especially nowadays, yeah. Especially yeah. with social media and everything mm-hmm. and attention spans. And, you know, you just got to provide as many outlets as possible for the youth to be able to uh, follow their passions and, you know, uh, express their talents and amplify those. Mm. Um, and I think it takes, uh, you know, a village, yeah. obviously, as, as it you know, does, say, yeah. um, to raise a, a good human. It does. Do you believe it's more um, community? It, it, not in community, but do you believe it's more in the influence of just the friend circle that you have? That because everybody else is kind of getting into that type of industry or that type of environment that you're going to feel left out, that you should get into it? I think it makes a difference for sure. Yeah. A nature versus nurture. I don't think you're born as a drug dealer. Drug dealer, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> no true. That's you true. come out of the womb and you know, I'm in the hospital, dealer. it's like, ah, yeah. you know, this is going to be a drug dealer. <laughs> yeah, <but> even, <laughs> even if they do, I mean, this is what I heard is that even if they do try to get out of it, they're like, I can't. It's yeah, just, once you're you kind of in, it's, you just it's can't. tough to get out. It's tough to get out. You got to, like, move to the other part of the world. Like, I know a guy that moved across the world. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's true. Twelve hour flight, probably from Vancouver. Anyways, he started afresh, uh, built something really great there, and uh, still has you know a little chip on his shoulder. Still got that gangster mentalityness, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. but in a positive way now as like a business person, business person yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and put it towards good use, and now is uh, leading kids and youth positively. No, well, that's and that's like the the fortunate thing is like because of all the the stuff that's happening with the youth, right? If you do talk to someone that's outside our community, the first perception is just like, oh, this guy's more like a gangster type of vibe, this, this type of field, right? They're very skeptical to try to talk to you because right. they make that assumption like, oh, you don't have that professionalism, mm. right? That because you're uh, a minority that you most likely started from the bottom, but you're in this type of environment, like they very question like if you are in a professional state that you probably did something really s- skeptical at, you know, when you started. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's just like even just a working professional, right? Like you just you'll notice when you're talking to someone that they're not interested in you at all, right? Mm-hmm. That they want to more be more adapted to people of around their own corner. Yeah. Right. Rather than trying to talk to people who really did have a genuine start and work their sums up, <coughs> sums up to the point, right? Yeah. No. And then <coughs> this kind of perfectly incorporates what we're trying to push forward with you uh, here, Manny. Is like we want to give like the younger audience that even ourselves. You guys are the pioneers that we learn from. Like, you know, you guys, some people that we look up to, we want to become something, we want to make something of ourselves, you know. Aside from that, how do you, inc- how would you say you want to encourage people like youths that are struggling with this type of, oh, easy money, this, that, getting into the wrong stuff? How do you say, like, build your, like, networking, go out there? Like, what should you do as someone who's young in their 20s to try to avoid these things and get yourself out there, to put yourself in a position to be successful? to have these ideas in your head or, you know, that different environment to strive, you know? Yeah, um, I think getting out of your neighborhood as much as possible. Yeah. If it's not possible to move out of your neighborhood. And I think it's important to be in neighborhoods that are more diverse, um, you know, whether that's ethnically or by thought, right? Yeah, the diversity of thought is so important. Yep. 
Um, <laughs> and then if you can't move out of your neighborhood, then try to be outside your neighborhood as much as possible during the day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and meet new people. You're just going to bump into people, mm. right? Um, take courses or something. Um, go to the gym. Um, eat healthy. Meditate. Pray. Go to the Gurdwara. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, right? Like, you got to you gotta create a strong mind. You create a strong mind that leads to better thoughts, leads to better actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once you feel how good it is to, like, you know, work out, you know, drink good water and yep. uh, eat good food and uh, get sun and be in nature and uh, all of that, and you compare it versus, like, you know, eating pizza, drinking a lot of alcohol, you know, smoking out, a lot of weed. Wasting money. Uh, yeah. Hanging out with the wrong crowd, wasting money. Yep. Like, you're going to notice the difference. Just try it out. Try the positive stuff mm -hmm. for a bit, like even for, you know, three weeks. Yeah. And you'll realize how much more of a difference mm -hmm. it, it is making in your life. Yeah. And it'll translate well into, you know, professionally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are the definitely building blocks of your foundation. Because <coughs> for me, it's like, I talk about it all the time, it's just, for me, I was in a type of circle where I was trying to work on the skill sets. I, already had, I was already in sports, right? So that was not an issue for me. But for me, it was just a lot of insecurity just because everybody around me was just partying. They were drinking and stuff. I was the only person, right, um, yeah. from what I can think of, right, back then was I was working on my businesses and stuff like that, right? But because everybody else was in a different type of environment, yep. that I felt that I was the the insecure one, the, un, the one that had confidence. I was I was the one that was kind of like the one in my circle that that didn't belong there. Yeah. And because of that, that led to a lot of insecurity. Right. But then found out later, I was like, man, I was doing my shit. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so those that was what, early 20s? Uh, or mid-20s? That was that like early 20s. second year university, so 20. Yeah, early yeah. 20s. Yeah, I mean, that's a period of time where you're trying to find yourself and who you're going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think anyone should get married in the early 20s. Yeah. It's a huge mistake because you're still trying to find yourself whether you're a man or a woman. Yeah. Mid-20s, even late 20s. I think guys should really wait till like their early 30s. Yeah. Just become as great of a human and a man mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah. Um, and then look for that. And so, yeah, during that period of time where you might feel left out and insecure about, you know, yourself and where you belong, um, it's totally fine. It's totally normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just trying to find yourself. That's right? so true. And then, you know, along your journey, what are some lessons you learned, like, coming across people? Because, like, sometimes you do got to have that ability to decipher yeah. who has good intentions for you, who have bad intentions for you. Sometimes you can have those blinders on, but, like, oh, no, he didn't mean that. Because it's hard because, you know, you're looking at this person like, man, this is someone who, who holds a reputation. Like, how do you decipher that? The characterization of people and how they treat you and how do you even move from even not engaging with them even though you know that someone – higher that holds authority or whatever it may be. How do you decipher that? You mean like someone's trying to screw you over? Yeah, that and like what have you dealt with throughout your career that you kind of, you know, gave you some lessons about how you're going to carry yourself and how you want to present yourself when it comes to your business settings? Yeah, I mean, you know, you just got to <coughs> be genuine, right? You got to be genuine. Um, and I think you can kind of identify those that are maybe overselling themselves at times name dropping a lot maybe mm. um just like over exaggerating things you, you kind of get to recognize that and some of those red flags and yeah. a lot of things just come with experience and your intuition kind of kicks in to so your subconscious mind as well through experiences and, and making some mistakes and, and trusting people mm -hmm. you might be a really good person that trusts everybody you know but You'll get burnt a few times, and then you'll, you'll realize you'll yeah. realize right that uh, not everyone has you know the best intentions or is as good hearted as you. Mm -hmm. um, and it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> That's a part of the journey. Part of the journey. Yeah. You learn. Um, you do the best that you can, and uh, you just control whatever you can control, uh, and and try to have as much control as possible of the outcome. Exactly. I think more and more people need to kind of sharpen their own tools when it comes to uh, their mental health. Because that's where we digress a lot these days. Uh, we don't want to take that initiative in realizing what we have wrong. Because, you know, I, I used to be that person. I used to blame my circumstances for where I wasn't in life yeah. until I really realized I'm like, 
I could have done that then when I was blaming other people or whoever, my circle, my parents or whatever. I'm like, oh, my parents didn't do this. But then and I'm like, what did I do? Mm-hmm. But just complain. Yeah. Right? I could have been like, no, I'm like, okay, I have this opportunity. And, you know, God gave this me the ability where the blessed me with parents. <coughs> Never had to worry about nothing. Always yeah. have food on my table. If I wanted something, I could always get it. Yeah. And I could work for it. Yeah. And that's the best thing about it. I can work for it. And, you know, for me, that's when the whole mentality, when I was, like, early age, I want to say, like, 20s, I realized, I'm like, man, everything I, I want in life is dependent on me. It's yeah. not dependent on my mom, not on my dad, not on my siblings. I really had, st- I struggled with, you know, that nice guy mentality. Help people, help people, help people. But I'm like, at what cost? I'm like, I don't know my true identity until I start having these, you know, self uh, you know selfish acts where i put myself first yeah that's what i a lot of people have that issue like trouble is putting themselves first yeah until you don't do that you can't help out nobody no, absolutely right so and that's the one thing i feel like a lot of people need to just work on be selfless i mean like be selfish but understand when it, somebody does need a handout you know understand where you are in life and give accordingly don't help people blindly knowing that it's going to impact you negatively. And what you said about relationship, I always been an advocate of do not get in a relationship at early age. The reason why, yeah. you're still developing, you know, your, your brain. You have a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can have yeah. a girlfriend, but I'm saying like full-on blown relationships, like right. open get married, like early 20s. I'm like, one, you're already constrained to someone's emotion at such an early age where you're growing personally. Now you're constrained to a lot of the things that you might want to do, but now you're like, you're conflicted. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a good place to be. Yeah, there are some relationships that grows, you know, beautifully. But at that age, I feel like people put themselves at risk for them to develop personally to the best capability that they can. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you can have relationships with, you know, girlfriends or whatever, where you do get to learn kind of the dynamics <laughs> of, of a you know, man, woman relationship. And um, you figure out what you like in terms of qualities yeah, and yeah. also what you don't want in your life. And that hinders you. Yeah. So, it's about experiences. It's mm-hmm. about learning, right? You can only change the present and the future. Exactly. Yeah. For it's like a lot of the relationships that I mean. So I even told the admin, I was like, <coughs> I didn't start dating till I was twenty six. Right. Right. And it was like I was talking before all the insecurity and stuff. It's just one thing I found is just a lot of these relationships are either very temporary or they're just very toxic. Mm. Right. And. I was like, okay, because for me, it's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not really a person that jumps to conclusions. I always ask <laughs> the why, right? Right. Why Why is it like this? I'm like, okay, I need to learn how to really like. He's too theoretical. He's too yeah, theoretical. I'm too, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a habit, but. Yes, it's like calculations going into a no, relationship. <laughs> but it's just like, it's just, no, you no, know how. overthink it, or what do you mean? <coughs> right? Are you just curious, or you like overthink it? I would just overthink I think it's both. everything. <laughs> no, no, because he, he, he yeah. is, he's a deep thinker. I am, because like for but me, it's like, because <laughs> for me, it's like, I don't want to just jump to conclusions just for what it is. Yeah. <laughs> right? For me, it's like, because my thing is like, okay, like, psychologically, like, it's very powerful. It's just like how our mind just adapts to every every situation. Yeah. So for me, it's like, okay, well, why is it everything is something so, something so temporary? How is it, like, it's not how it used to be before, where it was very genuine. Nowadays, it's jumped to conclusions. Um, you know, it's just, everything is just, it's temporary, right? And right. for me, it was just like, okay, well... I think was like I just find that a lot of people who get into these relationships are just trying to cover their own insecurities. They never really fr- worked on themselves, yeah. right? And it's just like, why do you fix yourself first before yeah. bringing someone else to your, into your life? Yeah, and and throwing your trauma and baggage onto them. That's yeah, the worst exactly. part, man. When I see <laughs> when when you see people like oh like you know taking on people's trauma, but like oh well get through it. I ain't getting through shit. <laughs> you deal your shit on your own. And then once you're yeah. healthy enough, then you should put yourself out there. We, we see it so many times where, like, that trauma jumping when stuff does go wrong. Mm. We're like, I'm not saying, like, just neglect it. There's going to be some turmoils in your relationship where yeah. that does come around. Yeah. But just be understanding why that is. And if you guys are able to come to an amends, be like, okay, I understand, in a positive manner, and you guys grow, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. But just harping on the negative things, and it continues for years and years. The more you focus on something, the more it grows, right? It so does. The more you're focusing on a problem, yeah. the more that problem is going to grow in your mind yeah. and it's going to take priority over everything else. It is. So you, that's why, I mean, you got to just be grateful all the time. Yeah. Be, you know, I don't like saying content, but like being happy, <laughs> you know, attitude. what you have, have attitude. Yeah, I would take it even a step further. Like, 
I don't know, I mean, if, if you guys had problems when, especially wearing a turban, wearing a bag, right? Well, trying to date someone. <laughs> especially up in a kuri, right? Um, they, for some reason, it's just interesting. It's just like they just don't want to date a guy with a bug. Which I'm like, all yeah. good. But I think <laughs> I think the reason why is because a person, <coughs> like from, uh, from what I can understand, like even for myself, right? I felt insecure because I was wearing a bug. Mm, see, that's that's where me and him kind of go on a different um, side. Because for me, yeah. I always felt I'm like, I'm like, because I have a bug, I stand out. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I get more attention this way. I'm like, I never had an issue, but he had like his. But you're also taller. Yeah, that too. Like, <laughs> and because I'm tall. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, it was. I mean, now it isn't before. Uh, before it was right when I was dealing the whole through that whole process. Right, it was just like, damn. It was like it's there was a negative connotation there behind was. someone who wore a pug. But like, oh, oh, put take amukar da pugga one k. They're like this yeah, that. Yeah, no, yeah. there was like all these mummies be like pug one. They put take amukar da hoga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, know? no, it's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just like e- even if like. What I found is just because you're wearing a bug, <coughs> you won't do, uh, let's just say, um, like you won't do the, like, what? quote, unquote, the casual stuff of a relationship. Oh, you, you, know you get into like a more intimacy <laughs> part. Intimacy You get into more intimacy part. part. Too, uh, this guy's trying to get freaky on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true, eh? Because then you're just like, oh, you're insecure. Like you won't be able to, you're not confident enough, right? To, uh, to do that intimate stuff, right? What? <laughs> you haven't been with a warrior before? Huh? <laughs> Take the bug off. That ass, man. Let that shit flow. No, 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 no. But it's just that um, what it comes off of, right? It's just yeah. like, oh, you know, I don't be with a guy with a bug, which is all good. I'm just like, whatever. I you think know? it's just. I'll uh, find someone else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be a lack of familiarity for them. Could be yeah. just be like their own kind of snobbiness or whatever it is, yeah. or just lack of you know education, whatever. But you know, don't judge, yeah. right? Exactly. Just honestly, just like, I mean. <laughs> Again, just like ignorance <laughs> is bliss, right? Yeah. It's like don't even think about it. Oh, don't think yeah. even think about the fact that you're, you, have, you know, you have a bug. It is obviously your identity and so it important. Is. It's yeah. your values. You carry that with you for sure, and, and you know as much as you can in everything that you do. Um, but like honestly, it's, it's about confidence yeah. and just your it swagger. Is. Exactly. But that's what it is. Even bun- like Monday nowadays, like I remember like back then, Monday would actually cut off the hair. They wouldn't even wear a bug because they're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not getting any girls. Yeah. Right? It's just like, okay, that yeah. just seems like there's a lot of insecurity. You're not willing to, like, work towards, you know, like, the all stuff that we were just building building yourself up. It's hard, though. physical, everything. No, it's hard back in the day compared to now. Now, yeah. everybody's wearing, so many people wearing pugs. Back in the day, you didn't have that, bro, right? I think yeah, Just yeah. Rain made it cool, too. Yeah, no, yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you, when, when you see someone on a, such a high... I'm like, not a guinea, I'm just a guy. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. what he says. Like, yeah. And a lot of the time, I think the narrative, when you get tainted, I'd be like, oh, Senga, Gianni, this, that, then I... You feel shamed inside, but like, yo, like, don't call me that because, like, it holds a bigger meaning to it, right? You can't win, right? With people, yeah. they're yeah. gonna say that, oh, you have a bug, like, you should be <laughs> at the Gordwara. Why are you over here? Uh, Why are you in the clubs? Yeah. 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 Shout money, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But at the same time, if you're a Mona doing Seva at the Gordwara, you know, why don't you wear a bug? Like, it's just like, no one can really win. No. no. If you think about it, people are gonna judge, they're gonna have their own opinions. You kind of just block out all the noise. And yeah, when it comes to girls, like, um, it's just, honestly, it's just the confidence. confidence. It, it is. Just don't think about it. Yeah. If, like, you do for a moment sense that a little bit of pushback or that judgment yeah. from that girl, you just kind of mm-hmm. ignore it and be like, why? What's up? Like, you know, I'm just saying hi or, uh, you know, what's going on? Like, I, would just, I would just be like. Just, okay. like, kill with kindness. Yeah. Just kill them with kindness. Yeah, be yeah. a high-value man, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the to. other aspects of it, too. Well, Your bug isn't, like, the only, the only thing. part of you. Yeah. Yep, there right? needs to be, like, emotional regulations towards it. It's just, like, don't be triggered. Just because of one person, right? Yeah. That's their viewpoint. Be like, okay. Don't be wish like... You, wish you all the best. Yeah. What, what are you going to like get sad and like... Fuck you. Oh, what yeah. do you mean? Or like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or like... <laughs> or like be rude to the to the girl. Because yeah. then you kind of like... Yeah, that's... You're not really a high value man. I know. You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> that's when you get insecure. They're like, yeah, fuck you. You're yeah. this, you're that. Yeah, yeah you're good looking. <laughs> it's so funny how we digress. Like I've seen guys do that. They yeah. do. It's not easy. They're, like, they're good looking. Why do you approach them then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, but... You know... Diverting away from that, one thing I do want to focus on is um, investment side of it. Uh, you know, you're, you focus on the advisory side and the investment side. What are the, some of the tips and things you can tell people? Because I remember you came down to Edmonton to Amrec Developments, one of the, um, uh, I think it was, uh, what, was uh, what was it again, sorry, the conference for? It was, I think it was in it's regards just to the development. getting the real estate community together. Yeah, yeah, getting yeah. everybody together. And I think that's so key in regards to meeting people and surrounding yourself. Um, with people that 
will lead you to different understanding of our, how life works. Do you have you always been a firm believer of like networking always led you to positive environments and always led you to like greater things to accomplish in life? Because you do attend these because it's in all the way in Edmonton. You don't have to make these trips, but at the end that you know these people like personally as well. Yeah. On top of that, how did that allow you to like grow your profile? Whether you come to real estate or give us some insight on that, whether it's you know your profile, your stocks, your you know your dividends and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, how did you decipher like what's good for you, what worked for you? How did you decipher all that? Yeah, I mean when I'm investing, I'm investing in the entrepreneur. Mm. Uh, I'm investing in their ability and their hustle and their grind, um, and to execute. And, uh, you know, the ideas are worth a penny. Yeah. You know, 50 Cent says, I got pennies for my thoughts, and now I'm rich. Rich. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, yeah. he's got so many thoughts, so, so much stuff onto whatever, and he's a different profession, so then he's, he's rich yeah. because of that, and he it allows him to do that. And But, like, ideas, you know, are just worth a penny. It's, it's what you do with them. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and that's what I'm investing in. I'm investing in the entrepreneur <coughs> um, and their ability to execute. Uh, obviously, I look at things like you know market opportunity, yep. yeah. um, how long it'll take, how much capital they require, um, are they big spenders, are they efficient, and uh, you know how they're going to deploy their capital, um, and I like being involved. Mm. So after I invest, I like being an advisor. Mm. Uh, I like you know checking their stats uh, and, and seeing what their sales are like, almost on the daily. Mm. Uh, I get obsessed should. with it because mm. I want my investment to grow, um, and. Just kind of being that, um, just that bounce for like the uh, entrepreneur CEO to bounce off ideas. Sorry, the springboard, mm-hmm. um, and just uh, allow them to kind of. You know, sometimes they always they already have the answer in terms of what the right decision is to make. They just need to speak to someone. Yeah. And you know, fortunately, like I've done it. I've grown a company from zero to seventy employees. I've sold it. Mm-hmm. You know, I always have that as you know an exit in my back pocket crazy um I've, there's a lot of obstacles and problem doesn't matter which industry you're in as an entrepreneur yeah that you face you know yeah. things like for example once you grow to like 20 employees you need hr and admin right like you just yeah. have to because yeah. managing people it's becomes hard. increasingly difficult it does yeah. and it's probably the hardest part the business actually gets easier you understand it more you spent you know thousands of hours on it you're just getting better at it but managing people, emotions, um, you know, delegating, responsibilities, um, you know, raises and firings. Firing sometimes is really hard. You know, all these things uh, are, are, are the most difficult. Um, so anyways, I just help guide entrepreneurs through that. So I invest in it. I help them guide through that. Okay. Um, but ultimately, to answer your question, I invest in the entrepreneur. And even if, let's say, I didn't have the ability to guide them all the time, knowing that they will figure it out. Do you find, um, like, the entrepreneurs that you do deal with, mm-hmm. like, what, what are their usual background in like for education? Do you, are they usually people who are just, like, right after high school, they just became an entrepreneur, just built on themselves, or mo- most of them had, like, some sort of, like, post-secondary? To be honest, I've, I've never really asked or thought okay. about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, But I think that they usually have some sort of post-secondary education. education. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, they, yeah, they usually do. Okay, because usually the reason why I ask that is because <laughs> this guy I hates school. This guy hates school. Uh, I wasn't big on school either. <laughs> yeah, because like, because majority of like entrepreneurs, like if you do hear about this story, they're like, God, I hated school so much, <laughs> right? And that kind of pushed them away from school and kind of going more into their own thing. Yeah, right. And it's just like it's interesting, just like like the norm. The norm is like, okay, go to school, get a get a job afterwards, you know, accountant, whatever it may be, right? But it's just interesting to see just a lot of people who do their post secondary, but it's not co- it's not completely related to what they're doing now. Right? School is good networking. Yeah, <laughs> it is. No, so it when is. you talk about networking and you know attending events, yeah, some are good, some are not Whatever, good. Yeah, yeah. You know, you go th- around the room, speak to everyone for like five minutes. You are able to identify. You should be able to uh, three people in the room that like y- you just don't <laughs> want to deal with, and three people in the room that. <laughs> you know, you think that are exceptional. And you want to be in contact with those that are exceptional. exceptional and surround yeah. yourself with winners. Yeah. You want to surround yourself around winners. You don't want to surround yourself around, like, the mopers and this and that. It's so know, true. And that's the one and excuses. Yep. You know, all that. You just want to be around, like, you know. The you want to gravitate towards that. All-stars. Yep. Yeah. That's it. 
It is. <laughs> it's so true. And then that's one of the things I feel like I struggled in university was the fact that I didn't do those things. I used to have like all oh, my schools, whatever, but I never went to those networking events, never went to any of those career fair, this, that, like whatever they had, I never went to it. Right. I never utilized what it was meant to be utilized for. Yeah. So I'm back in my head, I'm like, your school is useless. But then did well, I... No, I don't, not really keep us, I didn't really attend either. Yeah. At, at school, it's more of like the f- people I met in class, mm. when I did go to class, I didn't yeah. really go to class. So <laughs> I didn't like school. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I still did all right, which has a few, got my <laughs> bachelor's in business, but, yeah. um, you know, I, I just took whatever I could my dad really pushed it, right? Yeah. Education and all that. <laughs> and uh, so I just did it for the paper. Mm. Um, having really the degree. <laughs> yeah. um, and, I, you know, I took the skills from there, though. You yeah. learn some things. You do. You know, yeah. you learn the accounting side of things. Yeah. You learn econo- I loved economics, actually. That was fun. <coughs> yeah. um, you know, you learn you know, finance. You learn the psychology as an elective. I actually enjoyed history, so I took that as an elective. Um, I find history, like, super fun. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, you just take what you need from it. If you're going to be an entrepreneur and you don't like school, just take the courses that are fun then. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That you do have an interest in. And they force you to take electives too, which is good. <laughs> yeah, Taking yeah. away if you're an entrepreneur. It's good. And then you're kind of able to broaden your horizons that way and just your, your thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, networking events, like, I don't like going to networking events. I'm not going to lie. Really? Yeah, you know, yeah. I went to them because those are guys are my good friends. You know, you know them. Really um, well. And it was more of building that relationship. Supporting them. Uh, supporting them. Yep. And then kind of meeting that community, which I was like, holy smokes. Yeah. These up have a good thing going. going. Like, yeah, oh, my do. God. They're building something. Yeah. no, no they You know, I don't know what the camera is, but these cats <laughs> in Edmonton. <laughs> They're up to some great things. I yeah. don't lie, you know? No, no, no. Like, <laughs> I know I known Harp for a minute, too. And we're supposed to get him on the pod, too. But I know him for good, close to, like, eight, nine years now. Yeah. And, like, he works his fucking ass off, man. Oh, yeah. When it comes to, like, yeah. making shit happen, like, he makes shit happen. Sure. Like, if you if you look at where Amrick Development has came from to compare to it is now, yeah. man, they're going to take over the whole Edmonton the way they're going, I swear. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, they are, man. They're, they're going to take over Edmonton. It's <laughs> insane. And they have a good circle around them to support them to succeed. So it's like a perfect recipe. And, they, for you know, they have respect. I think that's important, too. Yep. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, integrity is important. Not being shady. Your reputation is important. Always be good. Always be authentic. <laughs> um, you know, give back. And yeah. that will, you know, pay dividends in the future. They do. Because yeah. they help you know, a lot. You know, w- when you help someone, uh, and try to help people, I think, right? You know, we talked about that a little bit. But w- especially when they're in trouble or something. And you know that they're a good person. And you never expect anything back, right? But if you help, like, you know, 100 people, like, if you ever get in trouble, I mean, you got a whole Rolodex of... Yeah, hey, they're going to remember. You got to get me out of this jam. Or, like, hey, I got this closing in, like, you know, a few months. And, like, you want to go in on this, <coughs> right, for this real estate deal? Yeah. What have you, right? Like, yeah. y- you've earned it. You've gained it. And if someone says no, whatever it is, what it is, it's okay. It's so true. Yeah. I wanted to uh, tap more into like the investment portfolio side of things, more, yeah. more specific. So, um, like I first started investing into just in the basic like stocks and stuff. Right. So, I invested into like I had my Wealth Simple, I had uh, Quest Trade, and all. I got tapped even into like data, uh, day trading as well. Yeah. And the re- the reason um, the reason why I brought this up is just because it seems like a lot of people they spend money on things that are just temporary, like useless stuff, yeah. rather than building stuff so like so for i'm kind of getting confused it's something that will compound over yeah time. something will compound but right. like it builds up to it right and what i'm saying is just a lot of people don't really have i mean like the average income in canada is like what 40 45 thousand around yeah, there like that. depending yeah. On yeah but it's just a lot of people are just like paycheck to paycheck but if you really break down what their paycheck is and where they spend it on it's on useless stuff yeah so the reason why i say that is because like like i only had I, w- I was working at nike I didn't have a great job, but it was $20 per week. I'll invest in some sort of stock, um, some REIT or something, um, ETFs or whatever it is. Um, and that kind of just compounded over time to the point my portfolio is doing pretty good now. Yeah. So I just wanted to get your own perspective of it just like how does someone start getting into investing? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, two things here. One is like you have a certain income. Yeah. And, you know, those are chips that you have to play with. Yeah. You know, where are you going to distribute that? You know, into investment, into consumption, shelter, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Invest in, you know, if you like coffee, invest in a Yeti, yeah. right? See, exactly. Yeah. I bought my wife a Yeti too. 
So then we don't have to go to Tim Hortons or yeah, Starbucks. Man, yeah. Starbucks yeah. are drinked out of control. Well, the place, oh. right? <laughs> because that amount of money compounds like crazy it as yeah. well. Right? It does. It's coming out. Uh, imagine doing that every day. Yeah. It's insane uh, how much right. that is. Um, you know, meal prep. Yeah. Um, try to cut your costs as much as possible. Mm. And then, you know, everyone has like their different way of like investing. You know, maybe you want to carve out a certain amount out of your paycheck that you invest in. Honestly, see, the easiest thing to invest in is an ETF of the index. Index, index yeah. yeah. That's it. Honestly, like 95% right. or whatever it is of investors can't beat the market. They can't. Yeah. Right. You, you're not going to outsmart Warren Buffett, mm-hmm. right? Like, no, that's true. I, th- I think there was a saying one time. It's like that, thir- uh, that 50, 30, 20 rule. Mm-hmm. It's like whatever your paycheck is, regardless of no, what position you're in, people are going to be like, well, I don't have this much money because I'm like, not willing to do it. But no matter what your paycheck is, put that 50%, whatever comes in, put it aside. And then your thirty percent goes to your essential, whatever your cost is, your rent, your as you said, your food. You can buy healthy stuff or give in what you, if you just research on it. And you know the twenty percent you can say you can you can blow it on stuff on yourself and slowly mitigate that, make it a little uh, less and less, yeah. and just build your portfolio. I I, <laughs> I used to learn that. Um, my dad used to tell that a lot. I always my dad. I'm like save, save for what? He always say save, save, save. I'm like I get that, but what are you saving towards? I mean, he never had a portfolio, no nothing. Yeah. The money just sitting there. I'm like, it's, it's cool to look at X amount of money. Yeah. What does it do for you? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, you got to invest this somewhere and for it to actually be worth it. I'm like, I could have 20000 40000 100000 Okay, I'm just looking at it. So what? Yeah. It doesn't do anything for you. I'm even, like, even I have a fr- uh, my friends, um, like my good buddy, Abel. Right? He, he's crazy on him. Saving money, reutilizing his assets, financials, and all that sort of making it work. He he told me this one story. He has a friend, and uh, he actually uh, he's a nurse. <coughs> he makes about 150k per mm-hmm. year, and he told me that maybe it's something that he has his own you know mental problems or whatever it is. But he, all of his spending went towards subscriptions, Netflix, oh, yeah. Amazon. 150,000. 150,000. What is he on? <coughs> Nah, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying though, it's just like, I mean, it's a stressful job, right? I mean, I, I'm not in the medical industry, yeah. so I, I won't understand it, but yeah. my thing is just like, <laughs> if you're just going to use excuses where you're just going to compensate your time by spending on subscriptions, buying all this BS and stuff like that, right? You got to really understand, it's just like, okay, you got to cut back on your cost. A lot of the stuff that you're spending on is unnecessary. Yeah. Right? Subscriptions like are the worst. That's the first thing you should look at. So bad. Yeah. It's like what you're spending on every month. That thing adds up. Yeah. And then if you forget, I mean, three months go by and you paid like 60 bucks for like Crave or something. <laughs> right? The 60 bucks go a long way. It does. It's such a, such a long way. <coughs> and people don't realize how long that goes. That 60 bucks, that's one less cost. Like you look at another one, you look at 100, you look at another thing. That's like almost close to two, three thousand dollars a year that you could put something yeah. into else. Heck, yeah. instead, of, instead of watching Netflix, invest into Netflix. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. I mean, there's guys out there on IG who are like, you know what? I invested in a certain uh, automaker stock. Yeah. And then from the dividends, I was able to buy that car yeah, yeah, or whatever, yeah. right? No, it's so it's true. crazy. Like, even myself, early mornings, I always turn on some sort of news. Like, rather than being on my phone, while I'm a time of pug, I would put something that's informative that tells you about the market or something. Just put it on while yeah, I'm time of pug. But be careful with the media stuff, though. You have to be careful because. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I Jim Cramer and all these guys? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's scary. That guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. So uh, that's too. That's scary part too. Is like where you get your information, yeah. because a lot of the time it is uh, subjected like towards whatever they're trying to put forth, yeah. and it j- it's not coming from a constructive uh, outlet. Yeah, you know? I mean the biggest thing is patience when you're an investor. Yeah. Investing in a really good company at a good price and holding it for like forever or for a very long time. Yeah. Yep. But the easiest thing as an investor, if you don't have time to do the research, and honestly, the most efficient use of your time. Is just invest in the index. Index, yeah. U.S. ETF index, you know, uh, Fortune 500, whatever, S&P 500. Yeah, even, even like, because, like, I think also people get overwhelmed <coughs> that some of these stocks are, like, three $400, and they just think that you need three $400 to invest in it. You can get partial as well. Like, you, if you only have 20 bucks, oh, buy 20 can, bucks. Right? Yeah, 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 nowadays yeah, they started can. doing it now. But, like, if you have 20 bucks, 40 bucks here, you know, it, again, compounds over time. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so. Yeah. But I wouldn't even pick stocks, honestly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pick stocks. Starting out, it's hard. Individual stocks. You can analyze it after, after like a couple years or something, investing in the index and seeing. Yeah. And if you get more interested in it, and if you're interested in, you know, the fundamentals of it, read some books. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin Graham, you know, read Intelligent Investor. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful book. Read other books. And then just 
get you know really smart and good at it and um just watch the market mm. rather than just starting to jump in and playing in the market yeah you, otherwise it could be a rude awakening yeah don't get You're enticed money especially if you day trade yeah day trade is oh. probably the hardest thing man now, <laughs> every, now everybody's an expert man everybody's oh, on the when the market's good everyone's a genius yeah <laughs> and you're d- when you're day trading yeah you invest in anything <laughs> And you're like, oh, you know what? I got this dope stock. <laughs> you don't yeah. even know. Like, invested in Lululemon before their earnings. Yeah. <laughs> 15, 20%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that shit was coming. <laughs> <laughs> but Mark is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Every stock's going to go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's true. It's true. You know? Yeah. Now, on that note, man, that that's, I think we cut the cover the gist of what we wanted to with you, Manny. I think uh, it's, uh, you gave a lot of you know, informative point, point of views that a lot of the youth can use. Even ourselves, you know, where we're trying to decipher what's the best for us, what's the next move, because that's what I always look at. What's the next move? What's the next move? I, I always call Harp. I'm always, I'm like, okay, what do I do? He always, you know, one thing about Harp, he always, uh, for a whole year, man, he used to send me these motivational videos every other day. Yeah. Every other day, he would send me this motivational video. Yeah. And he would just like, and one thing he told me, just stay persistent, Amit. Yeah. Stay persistent. Yeah. I know today will be a yes tomorrow. If not tomorrow, the day after. If not the day after, yeah. it'll be a week, a year. Whatever it is, stay persistent. It is going to happen as long as you believe in it, yeah. it will happen. Don't ever stray away from that. 100%. So, yeah. You know how Richard Branson started Virgin Atlantic? Mm-mm. With zero dollars. Yeah. He called up Boeing over and over again, stayed persistent, mm-hmm. asking them if they had like you know a jet that was just laying around that they weren't using. Finally, the receptionist is like, you know what? I'm going to transfer you to someone <laughs> that is going to give you the you? proper no. Yeah. yeah. Right? And he got transferred. And... You know, long story short, he convinced that individual, like, hey, you know what? I will take this jet off your hands. Yeah. I will pay the $200,000 a month in terms of lease. I want it, you know, a few months down the line. And then in the meantime, he started booking tickets for that jet. jet and yeah. you get that money right away. Yeah. Craziness. Already he's profitable months in advance wow. without a dollar coming yeah, out coming of his out account. <coughs> Top of that, he doesn't have to pay for fuel or anything yet either that's yeah crazy. right and that's how it started you gotta get creative cash flow is important reducing your costs <laughs> mitigating risks all those types of things are important. i can go on and on about this stuff <laughs> yeah i know we have a uh, short no time. About no no, no. <laughs> yeah. no that's beautifully yeah. said man and uh one last thing we always say to the audience actually you know muck you muck change it up last oh yeah, time, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> change it up a bit <laughs> so what is one positive and one negative advice you would receive that i've received Uh, positive, probably like cash flow. Cash flow is key. It's important. Yeah, cash flow yeah. is king. Yep. Cash flow is king. Uh, my dad gave me that advice. I never really? listened to him because it was my dad yeah. <laughs> for years. Uh, now, yeah, I, I appreciate that advice and see how important it is. So cash flow. Cash flow is king mm-hmm. for sure. Um, bad advice. I don't know. People are always saying things. Uh can't really think of anything off the top of my head, but some people might take credit in terms of your success and say they made you. <laughs> well, yeah. as Jay-Z says, make another me. Hundred percent. No, it's so true. <laughs> yeah, I think those negativity made me, then make another me. Yeah. It's so true, man. No, on that note, I think that's beautifully said, man. Yeah, man. I think everybody that's out there, man, comment, subscribe, whatever you guys think that we might lack or you guys you know you need more of. You know, give us some more insight. You know, this is what sparks our conversation. This is what allows us to bring, you know, guests such as Manny that, uh, you know, broadens our idea of like, oh, we didn't think of certain you know, conversation that way. Okay, now we can articulate it uh, in a way where it's presentable to the audience. So, you know, give us your thoughts and process on uh, everything. And then, you know, criticize us. Whatever we do wrong, whatever it is, it helps us grow as well. Yeah. So, yeah, on that note, guys, thank you for, you know, tuning in. Yep. See you guys on the next one. Peace. <laughs>